Hello and welcome to Western Perspective. Well, the WA election is around the corner and the state's political parties are gearing up with their policies in the battle to appeal to young Western Australians. One of those parties is One Nation, which remains sceptical about the success of the McGowan government, claiming there's still a lot of issues that need to be resolved, along with WA's COVID-19 recovery. We talked to the party's WA leader, Colin Tignall, about why Western Australians should vote for One Nation. Colin Tignall, thanks for joining us. How are you, mate? How's things? Doing good, doing good. Um, the main question I think a lot of voters will be asking is, why should people choose One Nation, given that Labor's doing such a good job when it comes to coronavirus lockdowns and protecting the state? Well, I don't believe they are protecting the state as well as people think, because they're not talking about all the things they're not doing. If you look at our tracing, our contract tracing, it's very scratchy. We've had uh, nearly 12 months now since we had a real big outbreak and uh, as our tracing is not good. Now, I can't believe that it's not good after 12 months. You know, and, and when we've got no plan for lockdown, so when the next lockdown comes, because there's bound to be another one, there is no plan for business or people with their work. Uh, and they, they, everyone goes, what are we going to do? We don't know what's going on. So there's a lot of things that aren't happening. We've got record homelessness. We have very, very high unemployment and even higher underemployment. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that he's not doing well. Yes, on the pandemic, all he's doing is following instructions from the health chief officer. Um, and now I believe any premier would do that um, because if he didn't, it would be committing suicide. So I think people have been a bit conned on that. Green saying that it's a climate election. If you had to summarise one word to go along with the word election, what will it be? Oh, I don't know about one word. I'm not into slogans. I mean, I think the big thing for us, it is not a climate election. I think the Bill Shorten election got rid of all of that rubbish. The Australian pe people said absolute no. And WA and Queensland were the two states that spoke out the loudest about that. Mm. So, you know, with Zach now chasing the Green vote uh, with his energy policy and chasing other people, I can understand now that we are the only Conservative Party in WA. There'll be a lot of Liberals. Uh, I live down in Busselton. There'll be a lot of Liberals that are saying, well, they've given us away. They've just thrown us away and they're not going to look after people, you know, that need jobs. But Zach Kirkup's claiming that his renewable energy plan is forward-looking and it creates jobs. Well, that's yet to be proven. At, at what it does do, it puts 700,000 people out of work across Australia if we don't have coal industry. Now, I don't necessarily love coal either. I'm not a fan of the old technologies, but really, realistically, renewables cannot at this stage look after the major energy needs. We know that because across the world, renewables account for somewhere between 1% and 3% of the world's energy. You know, that's the actual facts. We have to deal with facts. We, we know what we want. We know what we want to happen. Everyone wants renewables to be successful. Do you want it to be successful? Yes, I do. Anyone would, you know, yes. We don't want uh, coal. We don't want gas. We don't want oil. And some people in the world, especially in Australia, it's about 50-50 whether you have uranium. So they do want these new technologies to work. But at this stage, they don't measure up. And what's happening is because there's so many subsidies, that's the taxpayers' money, to keep these things going, uh, energy prices have gone through the roof. Now, last federal election, we, we had a big no to the green and going just 100% green. So Australians are saying, no, we don't want this. This is a big risk, risk by these people. And the other thing that they must remember is that in the, after the pandemic came out, I remember everyone saying, oh, we've got to get manufacturing going again. We will never will get manufacturing going again in the next 10 or 20 years under renewables because it doesn't work for manufacturing. When it comes to the vote preference matter, uh, Liberals and Labor and everyone's having a bit of a muslang at this point, what are the precise details and what are One Nation's precise details when it comes to preference deals with other parties? Well, preference deals, we always are going to put Labor and Greens last. That's a non-negotiable. Um, they've got an ideology that doesn't work for Australians. You know, the Labor Party's given away their workers and have gone very green and are just looking after, you know, I, I would say yuppie latte sippers in West Perth. They aren't representing the workers. 
So one nation stepped in there and now doing that. You've got to remember, we had a quarter of a million people vote for us at the last election. That's as many people voted for us as did for the Greens. But where's the evidence of that your voter base will increase, isn't it? Do you have, do you have party internal polling suggest that that's going to be the case then? Yes, we do. We do, but we don't rave on about it because it's party in, internal polling. You know, I mean, you can do whatever you like with party polling. Um, polling hasn't been very successful over the last 10 years. So I would say don't put too much faith in it. When you've done a lot of hard work like One Nation has done in the last four years, in Parliament, getting laws changed, supporting good bills, making sure that bad bills get amended or fixed up. That means a lot to the people of WA. That's why they don't want people like McGowan to have control of bath houses. They know that that's a very risky thing and they reckon that that's going a step too far. What's your offering for young voters? Young voters, we've got a lot of things. I think the number one thing is a job. This, this uh, Labor government has failed young voters. And the other thing is long-term jobs. And the way you do that is by offering small business incentive. It's not, we're not talking about the big union businesses or the big miners, we're talking small businesses. Reduce or completely do away with payroll tax. We've been talking about that for four years. Everyone else has been, oh, we're not sure, we're not sure. Also, do away with stamp duty on, on most sales now. We have a GST, stamp duty was supposed to go. That will make things cheaper. When you make it cheaper for business, and by reducing some green and red tape, they then can afford to employ more young people. Hospitality industry is at you know, desperate need at the moment. You know, all of that area is where most of the young people get their start. And of course, once again, increasing apprenticeships. Not talking about it, not making announcements like Labor and Liberal do, but actually doing it. We secured 2,000 apprenticeships at the last federal election through Pauline's hard work in federal election. That's exactly what we'll be doing. If we get balance of power in this state government, that'll be part of the price that Mark will have to pay to us to get our vote. It will be to get young people working. We want incentives for small businesses. We want a training and incentive programs. We want tape training to be cheap, if, if, if not even free, so it happens and we get people working again. And now, here's AMA WA President Dr Andrew Miller with this week's COVID-19 commentary. Hi, welcome to Not Being On Facebook. Uh, good news today, of course, with uh, Pfizer vaccine being initiated throughout Australia. And that will be a very important uh, initial step towards getting uh, good protection for the community so that we can see less damage from this disease long term than we would otherwise do. Uh, it will take some time until the end of October to get the um, adult population vaccinated and we have to make arrangements in the meantime to see what we're going to do about children. In the meantime, it'll be hold the line on our current COVID protections, which of course um, are affecting some unfairly. Uh, my heart goes out to uh, Australians who are stranded overseas who would really rather be here but unable to get back because of the caps at the moment. Hotel quarantine still needs fixing, frontline healthcare staff still need airborne protection and we've seen renewed push uh, against the uh, infection control experts group um, in Australia who are not giving us the protection that we want on the front line in terms of uh, ventilation, N95 masks. If you, have, if you have an opportunity to look at um, carbon dioxide monitoring, simple uh, monitors, easy to uh, purchase over the internet. Uh, it's making everybody reconsider what it means to have fresh air indoors and getting it down under 800 parts per million, very healthy thing to do for all sorts of reasons, but also we think that a lot of these uh, spreading events that have occurred with COVID in stuffy stagnant spaces could have been prevented with a lot more attention on ventilation. Very important that fresh air going through buildings. Have a great week and uh, welcome to uh, the non-Facebook world. That was Dr. Andrew Miller there. And that's all for this week. We'll be back again next time, but for now, it's back to you. Thank you, Nelson. And that's our weekly news and current affairs without Facebook. Until this drama blows over, please go to our website at wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for the latest articles, live press conferences and videos. Until next Sunday evening, from Sarah and myself, we wish you good health and good night. Thanks for stopping by.